So, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Uh, yesterday uh, we talked about uh, primary auxiliary verbs, clear? And today we want to move towards uh, moral auxiliary verbs, clear? Another type of auxiliary verbs we call them moral auxiliary verbs. Let's study about moral auxiliary verbs. Or what are moral auxiliary verbs? Moral auxiliary verbs, like it's a type of auxiliary verbs. Get it? And these words are used to express ability, clear? It expresses what? It expresses ability. It expresses possibility. It expresses permission. It expresses expectation, sug suggestion, clear? So, uh, as I said, clear that moral auxiliary verbs are used whenever you want to talk about your ability. We use moral auxiliary verbs, clear? Uh, these moral auxiliary verbs are nine. We have a number, how much? Nine. These are moral auxiliary verbs. That is can, may, might, could, will, would, should, must, and shall. These nine are called what? We call them moral auxiliary verbs. And we use function of these moral auxiliary verbs are what? It expresses ability. It expresses what? It expresses about possibility, clear. Uh, advisability, uh, expectation, suggestions, clear? Uh, that of obligation. So every moral auxiliary verb, like it has got different functions. It functions differently in a sentence, clear? So we will talk one by one. But, but before moving to talk about moral auxiliary verbs, clear? Let me tell you that all moral auxiliary verbs, moral, moral auxiliary verbs, these verbs, they do not take S, ED, or ING forms. Like all these moral auxiliary verbs, like can. So can is always can. You cannot say can sir, or can do, or like uh, can game, clear? Whatever. So it is in base form. These moral auxiliary verbs are always in what? It does not take S, ES, IES, ING, or anything with it. Number one, first of all. Number two, after all moral auxiliary verbs, after all moral auxiliary verbs, we use infinitive without two. After all moral auxiliary verbs, like all these nine moral auxiliary verbs, can, could, would, should, clear, may, might, shall, etc. So after them, we use which form of the verb? Bare infinitive, without two. Like bare infinitive means without two, or we can call it base form of the verb. Which form of the word will be used? Base form of the word is used over here. Let me tell you people, like, look, always keep in your mind, as I said earlier, that after them, we always use base form of the word. Like I can say, I can play. I can play. Can is moral auxiliary word, and after that, we have used bare infinitive. We have used, we have studied in infinitives as well. But if you do, do not understand bare infinitive or without two infinitive, or zero infinitive, we call it what? We call it base form of the verb is used. Like even with a word, with a word, you cannot put S, E, S, I, E, S, or V, E, S, or whatever it is, clear? Even yesterday I told you that whenever auxiliary verb is used, do you remember that we will use after that base form of the word? Do you remember yesterday I told you, clear? So we can say, I can play. You cannot say that I can plays. This is wrong. You cannot say, I can playing. This is wrong. Clear? Both these statements are wrong. If you say, I can play or I can play the clear, I can play it. So all these three statements are completely wrong. Why? Because as I said that after all moral auxiliary words, we will use which form of the word? Base form of the word will be used. I can clear, I will go clear. I shall go, I must go, so after I should go, after all moral auxiliary words, we will use which form of the word? 
base form of the word will be used, clear? And as, as, as I say it, like if I say, I can play. So I can play shows what here? It shows ability. Huh? It shows what? Ability, for example. So as I said, that model auxiliary word shows what ability. It can show obligation, for example, if I say, I must go. Clear? Suppose you can say, I should go. So all of them are what? Modal auxiliary verbs. We shall go. Can you see? All of them are what? Modal. And after all modal auxiliary verbs, what do we use? Which form of the verb is used? Base form of the verb or bare infinitive. What do we call it? Bare infinitive is used. Without two infinitive is used. Or zero infinitive is used over here. Clear? One thing is very clear to you all. Next. Whenever you want to uh, go for the negative, clear? You want to change this one into negative form. Remember, because I will be tell, uh, I will tell you all these things this time. The later on, we, I, I cannot explain again and again all these things in each of the model auxiliary words. Remember that if you want to change into negative, you will just only put what not after model auxiliary word. I can play. I cannot play. Uh, after all model auxiliary words, we will just only add what? We will add not. Clear, simply put not and we change into negative. I must not. I should not. Clear? I shall not. So just put not after them and it changes into what? And all, after all moral auxiliary words, all nine moral auxiliary words, you will put what? Not. And it changes into what? It changes into uh, negative. And if you want to go for the question, clear, you want to uh, make question, how can you do? Uh, you can bring like, you know, moral auxiliary words in the beginning. Like, for example, can I play? Can I play? Can I play? Like it's moral auxiliary verb and I put it in the beginning. All of them. Clear? Uh, shall I go? Get it? May I go? Can you see? May I go? So all with all moral auxiliary verbs, we, we will bring them in the beginning of a sentence and it changes into what? It changes into clear uh, question mark. Is this clear to all of you now? It was the, uh, like I can say, these are the basic uh, uh, information that related to all model auxiliary words. Uh, you, you must know about them, clear? All right, now, these are, this is the list, clear list of moral auxiliary verbs. Can you people see here? Can, may, will, should, shall, could, might, would, and must. All of them are what? We call them moral auxiliary verbs. Uh, uses of moral auxiliary verbs, clear, like moral words are used to express, clear, functions. These are the functions. It functions like is permission, ability, obligation, clear, prohibition, clear. Uh, a lack of necessity, advice, possibility, probability, clear? These are the functions. These are the functions that moral auxiliary verbs, they do. Now, every moral auxiliary verb has got different function. Let's talk about like uh, them that how it functions differently. Uh, they functions differently in this way. Let's. Now look here. Uh, Moral auxiliary verb we have here to work one of the sites I have written here. Then expression, uh, what does it express clear? And then I have, we will move with that off example. We will have example. Like the first one we have that is must. What do we have? That is must. So must, it shows us, it shows a strong obligation. Must shows us what? It shows a strong obligation. Obligation means for us, your duty. That you need to do something, clear? Uh, why do we do all these things? We use must at a time, like in more detail, I will, I will teach you later on. Must we use for obligation and what sort of obligation it is used? That maybe law or rules and regulations, clear, uh, force you to do something because that is good for you. Like for example, if I say you must not you must not smoke cigarette in Excel. Now, can you see what I, what I have used there? You must not smoke cigarette. So if I say you must not smoke cigarette, what I have used here? You, for example, you must 
not smoke. You must not smoke here. Must, it shows obligation here. It's compulsory for you, this is your duty, that do not smoke cigarette here. Why? Because this is a rule, because of the rules and regulation and because of what? Because of law. For example, like you, you want to say uh, there is like on the roadside and they have written, you must not park here. You must not park here. So now it's rules that this is not, this is not the right place to park. So whenever you want to talk about obligation, clear? For example, inside the class, this is our rules inside the class that you must not talk in Pashto or you, you must not talk in any other languages than English. So what do we use in this case? We use must because it talks about what it talks about obligation, get it? So the first one, as I said, you must stop when the traffic lights turn red. Can you see here what we have used here? must you must stop you must stop stop is work you must stop when the traffic lights are uh, clear red so this is your duty this is a rule and regulation or this is law because law forces you do not drive when the lights are red so now it is obligation number one thing number second uh, it can must is used for logical Conclusion or certainty. For example, here, this is like, you know, something probably certain. Certain mean maybe. Like, for example, he might be tired. He must be tired. He must be tired. Like, this is a logical conclusion that what you have got from it, he must be tired. He has been working all day long. Like, if somebody is working all day, so what, what conclusion you can get? It, he must be tired, clear? Or you can say like there is more certainty or there is more chances of that he could be tired. He must be tired. For that case, we can use must. Uh, must not, clear? Must not, we use for prohibited type of things. Must not. If I say uh, you must not park here, you must not talk in Pashto, clear? Or you must not smoke in hospital. Can you see? You must. You must not smoke in the hospital. So this is what it is prohibited. Something is prohibited. Who pro why is it prohibited? Because of the rules and regulation or law. Is this clear? So we use that word must not, the second one. So as I told you that function of model auxiliary verbs, can you see obligation, probability, clear, prohibition, we can say can. The next one we have got what can. Can is used for what can is used for ability. Like can talks about ability. If you have got ability, so we use can. Can talks about what it talks about your ability. For example, you have got the ability that you can swim. If I say I can swim, it talks about ability. Which ability? Present ability. It talks about what type, what sort of ability? Present ability. That now you have the ability to, that you can swim. I can swim. I can talk. I can go. For example, clear? Uh, you can say, I can speak in English. I can cook. So if you have got ability of doing something, then we use what? Can. But what sort of ability? Present ability. We use can for what, what sort of abilities? Present ability. Clear? Number one, like I can swim. So we have used can. So now in this case, can shows what? It shows ability. Get it? Now, uh, can can be used for what? For permission. If you want to take permission from someone, again, you can ask question with it of can. Like for example, can I use your, can I use your phone, please? Can I use your pen, please? You're taking what? You're, you're taking permission. Can I come in? Can I come in? Clear? Can I talk to you? You're taking permission from someone. Can I use your phone, please? So uh, when, whenever you want to take permission, you, you can use that of can. Can can also be used for possibility. When there are chances of something, possibility, clear? So again, we can use can. For example, 
smoking can cause cancer. What can cause cancer? Smoking. What is smoking here? As Jaran, it function is a noun. Very good. Smoking can cause. Which one is verb here? Cause. Cause what? It can cause cancer. Excellent. So if you smoke, there are chances. Clear? That it can cause cancer. So it, it shows what in this case? It shows probability. Possibility. Uh, sorry, possibility. Clear? Uh, you can say possibility or probability. Next. Could. Let's come towards the next third one. It is what? That is could. Uh, could, again, it is used for ability, but it is used for which ability? Past ability. Very good. Can is used for present ability. Could is used for past ability. Like, for example, here, when I was younger, I could run fast. Can you see? It was possible for me, like, when I was younger, when I was younger, like, it, it was possible for me. I had the ability to run fast, but when? In the past. At the present time, I cannot run fast. It was my past ability. Look, I could run fast in the past, but now I cannot run fast. Like, for example, I can say, when I was a child, I could, clear? I could eat a lot of chocolates or I could fight. So whenever you talk about, about your past abilities or you want to say, uh, when I was at school, I could speak fluent English, clear? So you were talking about that now, you cannot talk that much fluently but in, it, when you were at school, you could talk fluent, the, uh, a fluent English. Is this clear? Next, uh, it can also be used for polite permission, when you want to take permission again. But remember, could and can. Can is present ability, could is past ability. When you want to talk about ability only, so can and could can be used for present and past. For rest of the thing, for permission. For permission. Permission, it is for present. Possibilities for present. The khabar ba nizam ko ikhe. Kut sarap or sarap. Chikala ta so ability show ka wal gwaare. No present ability or past ability the paare istamali. Ko can or could. Chikala ta so permission ya da wal gwaare. Chik show ya possibility is wal gwaare. Aga present show ka hi, past pen show ka hi. Da sarap or sarap past pa yo case ki ti ye kala. Chikala ability bhi. No cases kut gwaara present show ka hi. Can am present show ka hi. Like for example if I say. Uh, uh, you know, the uh, the permission we Can I come in? Could I come in? Dwara yo matlab show. Can I dwara present mong sara permission show kai? Like you can say, can I use your pen? Could I use your pen? Who could dear polite day? But is what? It's more formal. It's more polite. Can dumra polite na day? Clear? Which one is more formal? Good. Could I use your pen? You can say, could I use no yo matlab show? Could I use your pen and can I use your pen? Both of them have both of them have got what? The same meaning. Present the para. Instead of can or could the ability habarakawe, it will talk about past ability. Clear? Ha. Then we come towards that of possibility. Possibility, like for example, it could rain tomorrow. It could rain tomorrow. So it's possibility. Or I can even say it can rain tonight tomorrow. Clear? Let's talk about may. M A Y. It's a moral auxiliary verb. It can be used for permission. Permission the paradise the May I come in? May I come in? Like you, you want to take permission. May I use your pen? Remember that may is more polite than can and could. It is more polite than may and like you can say, can I come in? It's not that much polite. Could I come in? It's more polite than can I come in? And if you want to say, may I come in? It's more polite than can and could. Clear? The permission, the paris tamaligi. Like, may I use your phone, please? Possibility, probability, the paramis tamaligi da sara. Like, it may rain tonight, tomorrow. That's the same way they it may rain tomorrow. Possibility, chances. It may rain tomorrow. It could rain tomorrow. But we more often use uh, 
for, for, for that our possibility and permission may and might. We use may and might for more that, clear than that of can and could. It can be used for what uh, next one might. We have it might. Might is used for what? Polite permission. It is used for what? Polite permission. Uh, we say, might I suggest an idea? Might I? It's, it's permission. Remember, among these four, can, could, may, and might. Among these four, might is more formal than may. May is more formal than could. Could is more formal than can. For the might, dumra istemal nishta. Zakachi dumra polite. We don't use the, it's not that much common. May their common day is compared to might. Why? Because it's not more common. We do not use in that more, much more polite way, clear? But if you want to use it, you can use it like might. Might I suggest an idea? May I suggest an idea? Can I suggest an idea? Could I suggest an idea? But they told you to come that formal, they may they take your might day. Possibility the parom is the mali de shidamun sara. I might go. I might. I might go on the holiday, clear on holidays uh, to Australia next uh, next year. Might. So it is used for what possibility? Chances. There are chances that I might go for holidays to Australia next year. You people can use in that way. Then we come up towards should. Should is also used for obligation, like the way we use must. For must today have a hundred percent. It shows hundred percent of obligation. There is no chance of like, uh, you know, uh, for you not to do something. But in should, it's 50-50. Either you want to do something, or you don't want to do something. It's a problem, Nikki. Like for example, if I tell you that you must learn it, you must learn it. Hundred percent, you are supposed to do it. But if I say you should learn it, if you learn it or you don't learn it, it's okay. Are you getting it? Like here we have an example. I should see a doctor. I should see a doctor. It's 50-50 if I see a doctor or I don't see a doctor, no, no problem. But if I say, I must see a doctor or you must see a doctor, it's 100% obligation that you must go and see the doctor. It is also used for advice. You want to give advice to someone. You should get admission in grammar class. You should study English. You give advice. Should is used for what? For giving advice. Whenever you want to give advice to someone, we use that of should. Should it also use for conclusion, clear? Logical conclusion. He should be very tired, like the same way, but it's 50-50. Conclusion, the way we studied in, must. Then we have shell. Shell is used for suggestions. It can be used for what? For suggestions. And it can also be used for advice. Like here we have, shall I get, shall I get his phone number if I met him? You want to take suggestions. Shall I get his phone number when I met him? Shall I get his phone number when I met him? It's a suggestion. You want to take suggestion from someone, clear? And it can also be used for advice. What shall I do to get rid of my acne? Get it? What should I do to get rid of my acne? Acne. Are you getting it? What does it mean? Clear? Uh, so that is uh, advice. You want to take advice from someone. We use well. Well is used for future. Clear? It is used for what? Willingness. When you want to show your willingness. There are a lot number of usages of well and all these things. We will study these things in more detail after this. Clear? But I just want to give you the idea that you should get something out of this chart. It expresses what? It expresses willingness. Like for example, I will wash the dishes. I will. Like for example, if I ask for water in the class and somebody shows willingness, that I will bring the water. I will bring, this is your willingness that by yourself you want to bring it. So whenever you want to talk about the willingness, you want to show willingness, we use what? Will. It is used for Expressing clear intention. Intention, clear? If you want to show your intention, like I will do my exercises later on. Like for example, if I tell you that, all right, I will see you later on and you show your intention. It's okay, I will do my exercises later on. 
is your intention. Clear? If it's okay, we can talk now. I will do my exercises later on. Next, we have wood. Wood is used, it's again, modern auxiliary verb. It is used to express willingness or offer. Like the same, uh, would you please take off your shoes? Would you please take off your shoes? It's willingness. Either if you want to take off, you don't want to take it, clear? And offer, clear? You want to offer. Uh, what would you like to take, coffee or tea? It's an offer. What would you like to take, tea or coffee? Would you like to have dinner with us? Clear, this an offer. You want to do an offer to someone. So we use that of wood. So we call them what? We call them moral auxiliary verbs. Now, it was a general discussion about moral auxiliary verbs, but now we will go in more detail to learn in more detail about these moral auxiliary verbs, clear? Should we study in more detail? Huh? Or is it enough for you? It's enough. Again, like if you need to, you want to go in more detail, clear to understand about model auxiliary verbs. So you can note down with yourself then later on, clear. It expresses what ability we have already studied. You can watch the uh, ex examples, all the things in the video as well, clear? Number one, it expresses what? It expresses ability, we have already studied. It expresses what? Uh, permission, we have already studied, clear? And these are the examples, you can take more examples out of it. It can be used for uh, making what? Uh, for making a, a request. A request, you, you can like, you know, you, you want to request someone. Like for example, can you get that book down from the shelf for me? Clear? Can you pass the notebook you request someone? Clear? Or can your kids turn your music, clear music down? So uh, that is, uh, it can be used for request. It can also be used for making offers to offer someone. Can I do anything to help clear? Get dinner ready, it's an offer. You do an offer to someone. It can be used, can I help clear? Can I help you find what you need? It's an offer, you want to do offer to someone. Can I give you a ride home? You offer someone. Uh, could, we have already studied could, it expresses past ability, we have studied. It is used for permission, we have already studied. It can be used for request, like could you please be quiet? Claire, you request someone, I request you. Can you please be quiet or could you please be quiet? Again, it's uh, a request, Claire. It can also be used for possibility as we studied earlier. I think it could rain any time. It's possibility. It can be used for suggestions. We have already studied. Uh, we could go out for pizza after work on Friday. It's suggestion. Uh, you could take the tour of the castle tomorrow. It's suggestion. You want to suggest someone. Here are more examples. You can take notes of it, Claire. It can also be used for making an offer. Could I give you a hand with dinner? Could I give you a hand? It means, what does it mean? Could I give you a hand? It means, could I help you? Could I give you a hand means, could I help you, clear? Could we help you find what you need? Could I give you a ride home? Uh, so this is what we had like about put. Inshallah, tomorrow we can study about, uh, if you want more information about may and might and all the rest of them. But I'm sure that it's, the chart is more than enough for you all, clear? The chart we have already studied here. So this chart explains each and everything. But if you need uh, more explanations, you can uh, uh, read it at notes that can help you a lot. This is the chart, entire nine. Complete nine uh, auxiliary verbs like we have uh, explained in it, clear? I will even like share the chart with you people.